Hi everyone, I'm, I'm here with the, the Six in Sleaford at, hey. at yes. Shug Studios. Yes. Shug Studios. Yes. That's right, okay. What a fantastic place this is. And we're here to talk about the Six. So if you were a teenager in Grantham in the 1980s and you were anybody, you knew the Six. Oh, you're supposed to say thank you. <laughs> You get much less. It's a difficult world if you're not the best. The difficult things you can see with these. The only thing you ever wanted to be. You work for more, but you get much less. It's a difficult world if you're not the best. Don't give up now, cause you could be the greatest thing that ever be. Anniversary gig. Wow, they are very exciting. So why and why now? Really good question, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a post-pandemic project, probably, because I think you know everyone's life slowed down, uh -huh. and in that slowing down, uh, we had proper clear outs, didn't we? I mean, we I did, and then I just came across things like tapes of the band. Uh -huh. Um, and it was a while before I bought myself a tape machine so I could actually play the tapes. But then when I played them, I was amazed by how good it all was. And it's funny how your mind kind of distorts the past. Um, and I had kept in touch with Bridget and Diana, and I think we just had a conversation and said, wouldn't it be great if we had a 40th anniversary? It's our 40th anniversary next year. And then through Facebook, we found Ruben and George. Yeah. <laughs> And very quickly, they tracked you down. Yeah, no escape. Yeah. <laughs> they could run, but they couldn't run. Um, Bridget, um, Ruben, and I were all at primary school, so we'd known each other since we were six. Yes, and then obviously, um, I was a hanger on. I, I just kept saying, Can I be in your band? Can I be in your band? And I used to keep turning up at the rehearsals, even though I wasn't in the band. Um, so I sort of inveigled my way in, didn't I? Thank God. Okay, and then the first time you got together to make, make some noise in the Blue Bell pub, do you remember yeah. we had bus seats? <laughs> Yes, it was five pounds for a rehearsal in the Bluebell pub uh, on a Sunday afternoon, and I'm guessing we rehearsed from two till five. But it all kicked up really when he joined the band, because he was like a proper musician. Two uh, years old, yeah, right. <laughs> he'd been around the circuit, yeah. big, big name really on the fans, big name on the fans. Yeah. yeah. And that guitar, George, he knows all the chords, yeah. I think. yeah. <laughs> it was a bit of a straight song yeah. that started me off, to be fair, that was what it was, and then Noel Rogers. Uh, Bat of Sheep, so that sort of 70s disco That's thing it, yeah. is what I really love and if I can emulate anything like that, I'm, I'm happy land. Yeah. But I didn't know whether it would fit in with this sort of simple pop stuff, but weirdly enough it, it did do, didn't it? That was the thing about us, that I, I came with the songs but I didn't come with any arrangements, you know, just bringing chords and words mm -hmm. into that room. And then I think all of us brought our personality and our influences uh, and the songs, and that, mm. that's what created the six. Only for better, never for worse. Mm, yeah, only for better, never for worse. Mm, yeah. George mentioned his. What, what other influences do you have? Do, do you know, play? it's really interesting because I, I was heavily influenced by the, well, I was heavily influenced by our big sister's record collection, uh -huh. so um, the Jam and Bruce Foxton, who, of course, yeah. so okay. all those bass lines, but when I listen back, I'm actually shocked how much scar there is, mm. but because we're oh, yeah. listening to like the specials mm. and the beat, mm. and so that, that always surprised me, I don't know what I mean, so. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, for me it was like Debbie Harry, Chrissy Hine, that, that genre. Yeah. Um, but it's funny, because somebody asked me just the other week, what sort of music, what sort of genre is it? And I, I just went completely blank. I couldn't really... 
mm. you know, articulate yeah. it in, in a sense. Not, I don't know if I can now, you know. Yeah, that, that, that would be a tough one to learn. Yeah. Plenty to my kids, and they all... Yeah, what did they say? Oh, it, God, that's really 80s. <laughs> <laughs> and the young man's time is the time I feel There's something made, there's something real Whatever goes is what I say Whatever I say is the big mistake First game. It was at the Phoenix nightclub. Yeah. It was in December. And I just, I felt like we'd done it forever. stormy night. (laughs) (laughs) The best gig you ever played. Mm. Um, Because I remember actually, uh, well, I remember seeing you on TV. I don't think I was uh, involved then. And I remember going to the rock garden with you. Mm. Yes, that was a great gig. Dean was familiar with when we took the coach down. Oh yeah. yeah. That was just because of the people that had played there, the history of the place. And of course. You know, to sort of stand up there and play. It was just, what, uh, when was that then? Was that? It was fairly late. late on, wasn't it, I think? 84. Well, I wasn't in the band then. I came yeah. to watch. What were the years, the start and finish years then? Because I It was really two years, 83 to, 80, to the end of 85, because 86, I was in a song for your then. Right. I watched that on telly as well. It feels like a lot was packed into the two years. It does. I can't believe there's only two years. I know. Bit of a deep question, but what what, what was it like being in the six when when you were that age um, in Grantham, you know, that stage in your life? But, you know, when you were in those two years, I guess, really lots of people that I knew, they all knew you and they were like, are you going to the six game? Yeah, of course I am. So, you know, I'm just wondering what it was like for you. Did, did you feel famous or, or not? Or? I was working in juices on small tools. You still be famous. Um, <laughs> and and um, we were all well, had full-time yeah, jobs, yeah, because didn't we? Um, I think Di and I were working at Morrison's and Di was working in the record bar. Oh, um, yeah, that was the... Uh, that was she would get people coming in. Oh, that's right. To come and... You know, oh my god, I've forgotten that, yeah. yeah. Uh, but it was funny because at one point I think Stuart was working at Morrison's yeah, as well. So the three of us, like on checkouts next yeah, to each other, exactly. singing was... six songs. Yeah. Did that ever happen? No. <laughs> was that kind of something that we created ourselves it was our own right, yeah, creation yeah. if you think about Grantham in those days we didn't have a cinema mm. there wasn't a lot for young people mm. to do so actually we just made our own entertainment mm. um, any other bands that, that you liked that you remember well definitely the English yeah. ones oh, yeah, I mean they were fantastic I mean you know and they were very successful they were um, they? you know fantastic and then there was the system the system, system. Yeah, yeah. 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 And Grantham had a heritage of Trevelisi. But I think also when I was when I read my diaries back, what's really interesting to me is how much purpose I, you know, you suddenly have because you just kind of like I don't know, struggling with all sorts of things, and mm. suddenly you kind of like I don't know, looking at PAs or going to practice rooms or putting up posts, and just suddenly felt like a bit of a community, yeah, really, yeah. Yeah. And, and and an outlet for our creativity. There was a such a high standard of original music at that time. Yeah, yeah. It's quite a few good heavy metal bands as well. Was it Overdrive? Yes, <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. I've got their Vesuvius. Yes, Vesuvius. Gunther yeah. Records. Oh, brilliant. Okay, right, so then uh, turning our heads and thoughts forward to the gig then in October. No, it's going to be a room we sold 100 tickets Great. in like three weeks, three or four weeks. And so I think it's going to be a lot of friends, people that we haven't seen for a while. It's going to feel like there's a lot of love in that room. Right. And we're going to ask people for their stories. And okay. that's what and it's at the Guild Hall. It's at the Guild Hall. And we played that room in, I want to say, 84 or something. Probably early 84, we actually played that ball. And so it's going to be interesting to be back there 40 years. Well, I've got a shock off the microphone there. I couldn't see. <laughs> You were in the back of the van with us. All sorts of um, did you, yeah, contravene, did you, did a amp ever fall out on your head? Yeah, I think my my strongest memory is the mulch level. Yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like we were always the mulch But yeah, I, but uh, I was just really excited when you kind of reached out to find out that you were doing this, and I thought it was such a good idea. So, and, and, I, and I'm sure there will be a lot of love in the room on the night, actually. Um, so, I look forward to it.
Brilliant. Thank, Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you.